What's up, YouTube? DCRC here. Today I'm going to be doing a review on my Kyosha RB6. This is going to be the review part two. Um, so I'm just going to review or go over a couple more things. This is just the Prolong Proline Bulldog body that's discontinued now, but I know you can sometimes get it at local hobby shops if they've just had it for a long time. Uh, so yeah. Um, I'm going to start off the review just right into it and go to uh, durability. Or no, I'm going to start off with the build. So, the build for this car, I think some people um, say the build is really bad, but I think the build is really good. Um, like, the manual might could have been maybe a little bit more clear, but I think it was just fine. Um, so, yeah, and... Everything went together really good. I didn't have to shim anything or cut anything or do anything like that. So the build is amazing. So I'd give the build probably 8 out of 10 on just the way it went together. Or the way it went together, I'd probably give it a 10 out of 10. The manual itself, maybe a 7. Um, so yeah. Now to move on to durability. So durability on this car is really good. I have a little story that you'll see how good it is. So, I was at a practice night and I was driving this car and I came down the straightaway and there was a slash on the straightaway and I couldn't see it because there was this guy beside me leaning over the rail and I couldn't see it. And so, um, I went into him full throttle and no one said straightaway, so, like, I didn't know it was there. Um, and so I went into it full speed and I saw my car go under this guy's hands and then I didn't see it go out and I heard a big boom and I was really freaked out and I saw a bunch of parts just fly everywhere and I was really scared and so I run off the driver's stand and every single part that was on the track, there were about six parts, um, was from the slash and this car is it was all together, there was nothing bent, um, I took it apart when I got home, nothing bent, nothing broken, nothing cracked and still here and so yeah that's how strong this thing is and it's just amazingly strong so yeah that was really cool when I did that and I was really amazed the only part I've ever broken on this car was a plastic like I have the aluminum one on there right now the uh, aluminum steering rack but I had a plastic one on there that came with the kit and that one broke I think the second day I had it out I just came off a jump and I shorted it. It was a one point landing and landed like that. Um, like, if the lander was like that, I landed in the lander and just hit it right there and snapped it. So, I guess that was more of my fault than its fault. But I know a lot of people that have broken the plastic ones and never had a problem with the aluminum ones. So, yeah. And the aluminum one gets it less slop in the steering. Like, there's barely any slop in the steering. So, yeah. Um,. I'll probably go to performance of the car now, starting with jumping and landing. Um, so the jumping and landing on this car is amazing. Um, like I probably will give it straight away, um, maybe a nine out of ten, eight out of ten. There actually may seven and a half to eight out of ten, um, because it jumps and lands really good. It whips in the air really good, but it doesn't. Uh, go around the turns how I might like it to and I'll explain that in a sec so with the jumping and landing it jumps really good it just you you just jump the car her is jumping the part the going up the ramps and be like just like any other car pretty much um, right now I have it set up so it, it doesn't drag at all on the chassis you can see there's not really any dragging like I cut this part off of the chassis protector so it gets the screws better I have a couple holes right there so I can get the screws to take out the rear part of the car without destroying my shock, or destroying the chassis protector, because you have to admit, it's pretty cool, <laughs> 80s style JTP. Um, so yeah, go check out JTPRC.com, um, go check all, out all their stuff, they have t-shirts, hats, phone, iPhone cases, or no, iPhone stickers that you can put on your phone. And all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so yeah, go check that out. 
Uh, so yeah, and then I'll get back to the RB6. <laughs> um, so, uh, the jumping, like getting off the jumps really good. It doesn't drag at all. Um, whipping it, whipping the car and pointing it into the turn is really good. Like right as you come off the jump and you turn, the car just goes slowly and whips and then just lands and it kind of just points and it's really easy really really easy to whip this car and if you come off the jump and hit a rock or something and it kind of knocks your rear end out you can point your tires down land like this and just lands really smooth and it just fixes itself immediately straightens itself out and goes down so uh, the landing on this car is really good the whipping is very good um, I have tried the B5 and the B5M, and I've tried to whip it with those cars, and, um, the whipping in the air with those cars is just too sensitive for me. Um, with the B5s, they, right as you turn the tires, it just whips immediately, and it's just too fast and too sensitive, so, this is a really mild out, um, whip, and I really like it. It really suits my driving style, because I like to whip it a lot, um, and so yeah, it, it really allows me to, and I, I sometimes have a problem, or I used to have a problem with whipping it and not not landing it too good, but just with this car, it has taught me to land a whip very good, and now I can do it with any car. So yeah, it definitely helped. Um, so yeah. Uh, and another thing about the whipping, I had the D413, the Hot Bodies car, um, earlier this winter and when I whip that car I would turn it it would do this and then when I undid the steering it would whip the other way so it kind of be like a slingshot so it would start to whip one way and then I'd let go of the steering and it'd whip the other way so and this car is not like that once you whip it it slowly corrects itself but it doesn't like go back immediately so yeah this car is really nice so when you whip it it does that and then you fix the steering again and then it slowly comes back down so it's really nice it's not really sensitive and it works really good all right so now it's a cornering and exiting turns and stuff like that so coming into the turn I drive it pretty hard I try to like pin it and then tap the brakes and then I tr I like to slide around the turns with 10 scale indoor with high bite I just can't do it because the high bite just won't let me um, but I try my best to do it. And so, coming into the turn with this car is great. The car has amazing side bite. I don't think I've ever, like, done a burnout, um, on accident, like, with this car. Unless I, yeah, like, I really try to. On purpose, of course, I could. Um, but on accident, I don't think I've ever really done a burnout and done a donut. Um, coming into the turn. Now, coming out of the turn is a different story. Coming out of the turn with this is completely different. The forward bite on this car, I have to admit, is not the best. Uh, the forward bite, let's say, on the B5M is amazing. I would say it probably has too much. Um, the B5M, it pushes out of the turn and doesn't allow you to steer too much. But this car, it has very sensitive steering coming out of the turn. So if you're on a slimy track, like, if the track's brand spanking new, and you're the first let's say you're, yeah you're the first one on it and it's being watered nice and it's indoor um like in the middle of the winter uh it's pretty normally the track at first maybe the first day is pretty slimy and the car wants to slide already but when you try to come out of the turn as fast as you can the car like if you say if you're turning right and you come out of the turn the car just wants to turn right and i have fixed that problem quite a bit with drilling the try to get you guys to see it there you go so drilling a third hole on this arm so it comes with two holes in there and um i drilled a third one on it by myself um and then i also or that helped a lot of four bite and i also turned the battery sideways try to get you guys to see that good so you just have to cut the side guards to where you want it to be and then it's optional that you can uh, shave down the chassis so it's the battery sits flat and you can drive it harder without it flipping over as easily because the weight is lower. Um, 
and I, I, I felt like that change made it more aggressive in the turns, but it made the car like, easier in a way I can't really explain, but at the same time a little bit harder and more aggressive. Um, but I really recommend trying that. And you can always switch it back and just rotate the battery back. So, yeah, I, I would really recommend trying that. Uh, definitely try this if you're a uh, forward battery or sideways battery. This definitely helps. And, yeah, a rear motor with this car, it has plenty of forward traction or forward bite. I've tried it with, for a day with a uh, rear motor, and it worked just fine. It was no issue at all. Jumping and landing was probably a little bit easier. It was more tame. And, um, cornering was, obviously it cornered like a rear motor where you kind of have to pivot the car. Um, but it exited the turn probably a little easier than mid motor. So if you're kind of just starting out with two wheel buggy and you get this car, I definitely recommend rear motor before you try mid motor. Because it'll be a lot easier to start. Um, so yeah, that's the review for part two of the RB6. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, go to Instagram, go to DC, RC, DC underscore RC, all lower cases. Uh, that's my account on Instagram. And check that out. Hope you like this review. Again, please like, comment, subscribe. See you later. Peace.